Today we're going to talk about doing some woodworking with a really basic set of hand tools. And the tool we're going to start talking about is the hand plane. This one is about 14 inches long. You will see them a little bit shorter than that, but one of those two planes is the one that you most commonly find. And they seem like wizardry to use them until you've set one up the first time. And we're going to talk through that process. And when you set one up and use it, you can see there's not a lot to it once you've learned a couple of tricks. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. A plane like this is not wizardry. There's a trick to setting them up. And once you know that trick, it makes the plane not only more useful, but a whole lot easier to use. And the trick is the blade on a plane like this is curved. If you think of it like a spade shovel, if you went out to your yard with a, a flat pointed shovel and tried to, to dig a hole, that's a hard way to do it. If you go out with a spade shovel that's got a point to it, you can plunge it into the ground pretty easily. So when this plane works, it works because this, this fairly aggressive curve on the, on the iron or on the, the blade really allows it to take a big shaving and that's, that's it. That is the trick to setting up one of these. This one I have ground to a, a circle that's got an eight inch radius. That's the, that's what I've done there. But I'm going to set up another blade today and this one is not set up. It's, it's ground fairly straight across. And so what I've done is I've taken a piece of a cereal box and set it up by scribing out a line that's to a 10 inch radius. And somewhere between eight and 10 inches for your radius is, is the sweet spot to be in. And so now I've got this template and I can just lay it onto the blade itself, get it right up there where I want it. And then I told you it was a trick. We're going to use ye old Sharpie and draw a, draw a line right out there at the end of the blade. And by doing that, I have marked out that 10 inch radius. I'm going to take it to the grinder. Now, to my way of thinking, watching somebody run a grinder is about like watching paint dry, so I'll spare you that, but I'll walk you through the process. So I've set my tool rest so it's 90 degrees to the blade, and what I will do is, is put the blade on there. I've got my line marked out, and I will just a light touch, and I don't want to be too aggressive and overheat the blade, but I will put that, that 10 inch radius curve on there. Then I will reset, I'm not gonna get it, Correct, but I would reset my my angle to about 30 degrees and it's not terribly critical that we get exactly 30 and I will do that and then I will uh, I will grind off a bevel on it and once we have done that we might touch it up a little bit with a with a hand stone but beyond that that is it there we are I wasn't timing myself it was probably about three minutes at the at the grinding wheel just a nice light touch uh, and we've got a bevel on there and we could be done and put it in the plane and it would probably work just fine uh, but I have one of these little diamond paddles uh, you can buy them for about eight dollars and there's a, a burr of metal that gets turned over when you run it on the wheel and so I just like to maybe two or three passes four passes or so on the on the bevel itself, just a, with a light touch, and then maybe polish it just a little bit on the back. Um, but the way this plane cuts with that curve, it doesn't have to be polished up to a mirror finish for it to do a, a really pretty good job. So now we're back at the bench. We've got our plane here waiting for us. Uh, we've got that iron I just sharpened up, and then we've got our chip breaker, which still has the screw in it. Uh, Remember, you slip it through so that screw pops through the hole, and then we slide those together. And on this plane, with this fairly aggressive um, camber on the blade, they don't. We don't have to get these two parts very close um, at the tip. Uh, there can be, I don't know, probably an eighth of an inch of overlap there. And once we've got that done, then we'll use our screwdriver, tighten it back up. Then we have to reassemble the plane. And I'll come around and show you so you can see it a little closer. So we've got our plane here like this. The bevel on this plane, the bevel that we sharpened, has to go down. And so it's, it's against the plane itself. And so we put it in. And then there's this little notch 
that you want to set it on. That's a side to side adjustment and uh, we can talk about that when we start using it. Then we take our lever cap. This lever cap goes over the screw and it should, should fit in there a little bit loosely before you tighten down the cap itself. Snug it down. Should be ready to go. The trick with a, a plane like this is since this is a new iron, it's going to be in a different spot than the other one. And there's a wheel back here. You can see right there, there's this wheel that allows you to adjust the plane forward. And you can use it uh, as, you're, as you're planing to, to make it cut more aggressively. And so your index finger can push that wheel forward. And as you rotate that wheel, think of it like the gas pedal on a car. If you want it to take more of a, uh, of a thicker shaving, then you just wheel it forward. Uh, if you would like it to take, if it's cutting too aggressively and you need to back it off, then, then you would back it up. But uh, I don't know how this one is going to work. So I'll go over here to this board that I've set up and There we are, we're taking shavings. They're pretty thick shavings. Um, and so, but it seems to be doing just, just a good job. That's all there is to setting up a jack plane.